He was one of America's most notorious gangsters, and he's still alive. It's not often you can say that. The most senior-ranked mobster to ever walk away from the mafia and live. At the height of his criminal career, he was pulling in 10 million bucks a week and was so notorious that he was even mentioned in Goodfellas, the Martin Scorsese-directed crime thriller widely regarded as one of the greatest films ever made. And then there was Pete the Killer, who was Sally Balls' brother. And you had Nicky Eyes. What's up, guy? And Mikey Franchese. Yeah, I want to see him. Michael Franchese joins me now. It is so great to have you on the show. I got to catch up with you on radio earlier in the week, and it was such an incredible chat. I'm not going to waste any time. I want to know, first of all, do you know how many lives you either took yourself or oversaw the killings of? Well, you know, Aaron, I get asked that question a lot, and obviously it's, you know, it's very uncomfortable, but I can only tell you this, you know, I spent 20 years in that life, and, um, you know, violence is part of the life. If you're part of the life, you're part of the violence. And unfortunately, I've seen my share of it. Um, we had a lot of wars in our family. The Colombo was a warring family, so, you know, unfortunately, a lot of guys uh, met with that fate, and I'm fortunate to be sitting here today. Do you feel guilt about it? And, and secondly, I'm assuming that most of the people that were killed were involved in that gangland, essentially, that, that the mafia mob kind of criminal dealings. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I want people to understand, you know, we didn't go around killing innocent people. When you take an oath in that life, um, you know, there are certain policies, certain rules. For instance, during our time, we were not allowed to deal with drugs. We were told straight out, you deal with drugs, you die. You don't ever disrespect another uh, made man's, you know, wife, sister, daughter, mother. Uh, you didn't do that. And there were serious consequences if you did. So we understood we were taking that oath. And if we violated that oath, that we could pay for it, you know, quite, quite honestly with our lives. So this is not something where there was just random people getting killed. Um, this was mostly among uh, one another, you know, guys that took the oath. Why did you leave, Michael? You know, I left the life. I got into the life to help my dad, who had a 50-year prison sentence on a crime that I believe till today he didn't commit. So I needed to help him get out of essentially what was a death sentence because he went in when he was 50 years old. So I was, a, you know, going to school. I was a college kid prior to that happening. So I got involved because of it. And then, you know, I always say this, you know, it, it's just a bad life. I'm not calling the guys bad because I was one of them. But I don't know any family of any member of that life that hasn't been totally devastated, including my own, and not my wife and kids, mother, father, brother, sisters. It was devastating to the family. I'm really the only one, you know, that survived. So any lifestyle that does that to a family is not a good one. And I married a young girl who's now my wife of 38 years. Mm. I didn't want to put her through that. So I decided to walk away. It was tough because I didn't want to hurt anybody. I didn't go into the witness protection program. I didn't put people in prison. But leaving the life is something you can't do. So I was in a lot of trouble in leaving. But fortunately, uh, you know, I've been able to outlast everybody. And uh, here I am all these years later. And, uh, you know, I made it through. See, even just hearing that, and I got to spend, as I said, 30 minutes with you, a full podcast uh, on my radio show, and you strike me as a man who actually cares about people or, or at least has the capacity to. So how do you inflict violence and pain on others when you clearly have a conscience? Because you clearly do. There are parts of you that are, are noble, that are loyal. You're a religious man. How do you separate those two worlds? Well, it's like I said, you know, when we take an oath, we feel that, you know, the playing field is level. If we make a mistake, we can uh, suffer the same fate. Mm -hmm. And quite honestly, for me, it was difficult because there were things that I did I didn't want to do. And people have asked me, well, how did you do it? You know, and you have to obey the rules. Maybe that's a cop out. I could have said no and maybe put my own life in jeopardy because you can't refuse an order. Uh, but I would kind of step outside of myself, you know, and, and do what I had to do and then come back and... Yeah, it troubled me, and I certainly have regrets about it now, all these years later, uh, some of the things that I, I had to do. But I wasn't somebody that enjoyed it. I didn't look for it. Um, you know, there's kind of different guys in that life. Mm. Um, you know, others I saw maybe they had a little bit of a propensity to do the violent acts. I didn't. Um, 
you know, that's the only way I can describe it. But, you know, it, it's never a pleasant thing for anybody mm -hmm. to have to get invi involved in a violent situation. Very different worlds, but I want to ask you about the gang situation in our country and, and the killings. I mean, we've gone through eras of, of you know, horrific killings and, and gang violence, and Melbourne's had some, Sydney as well, but they seem to be getting more brazen. They're in public, daylight, etc. How do we mm. stop this? And you're someone who's been on the inside. Is it stopping drugs from coming in? Is it cracking down on sentencing, more police? What do you think is the answer? So essentially, what would have stopped you guys from doing what you did for so long, if anything? Well, you know, during my lifetime, there were three wars in our family uh, that I was aware of and, and uh, obviously involved in to a degree. Uh, we had wars in Philadelphia. We had car bombings. You know, 80 car bombs went off uh, uh, among our group of guys there. There's only one way to resolve this, and that's for law enforcement to really crack down, because what happens is they'll start putting people in jail, and then the gangs or our guys themselves would start to say, hey, we got to put a stop to this because they're devastating us now. So it's really law enforcement cracking down on, uh, you know, on the mob and, uh, and putting people away and making them understand we're not going to tolerate this because there are times when innocent people get involved, yeah. uh, you know, not uh, intentionally, but it does happen. So it's all about law enforcement and, uh, you know, cracking down on these, on the, the acts of violence, putting people away and making them understand not going to stand for it. It's the only way to stop it. I could listen to you for hours and hours and, in fact, you can in conversation with Michael Franchisi tonight in Melbourne through Ticketmaster, Sunday in Sydney through Ticketek. Go along. It is fascinating. Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Erin.